Anytime we talk about numbers, there's one person I turn to in the United States Congress, and it is Congressman David Schweiker. Congressman, thanks for doing the show. You know, I don't know if that's the introduction. <laughs> no, it's the truth. Listen, when we talk on the radio show, whenever something comes up that has to do with statistics and numbers, you're the first person we think of yeah. because you know the minutia and you can make it simple. Do you, for do you know like how me. many of your viewers just turned off their television? None, because we're going to talk about the tax reform and everybody right. and the argument that's going on. Uh, let's start with the basics. We knew Schumer was going to say the things he said that they're raising the rate yeah. on the bottom end, they're lowering the rate on the top end, and it looks like, on the surface, if you just take that sound bite, that we are lowering taxes on the rich to raise them on the poor. Yeah, it, look, um, we're going to have a series of absurdities, because understand, all we've ruled out now is saying, look, we believe these are gonna be the brackets, but we haven't actually put in the threshold numbers yet. So, um, and apparently, the first number we're working with is zero. So up to $24,000, a couple, zero taxes, zero tax rate. And, but some of the left, shall we say, got a little out ahead of themselves and started saying, well, the first tax rate is 12. Well, okay, except it's zero up to the 24,000 because we've doubled the standard deduction, so is zero a tax rate? Look, a lot of that's just going to be the absurd nature of those who are just desperate not to have Republicans have a success. And you keep asking, can you put your blinders on? Can you tone down your, your partisan rage? And understand, if we don't do something that's dramatic in economic growth for the country, um, we're in real trouble. That was the most interesting comment you made about this when we were talking. I had never thought of it this way, and I don't know why, was we cannot tax ourselves out of these problems. Medicaid, um, Social Security, the obligations, the deficit, that it's got to be through growth. We have to widen the economy. There's no way to tax ourselves out of the debt. Look, whether it be um, a Republican or a Democrat, um, if you listen to the folks that look at the net math, the numbers, um, we're heading towards an entitlement crisis. Um, right now, about three quarters of all of our spending is in entitlements. Um, now, some of that's earned entitlements. You earned your Social Security. You earned your Medicare. But then there's unearned entitlements. You fell below a certain income, you get those. That's three quarters of the federal budget today. Wow. And with the retirement of the baby boom, we're heading towards a time, and it's not very long from now, where entitlements are consuming almost every single dollar. And when we try to do that thing called dynamic scoring, where you sort of look out to the future, what the math looks like, the computers break down when you start getting about 20 years out because it can't make the math work um, wow. as a percentage of debt to the GDP. So what happens if I came to you and said, you're a Democrat, you're Republican, you're agnostic, um, we're gonna do a tax code that's simpler, it's fairer, but number one, it grows the economy. And that growth is what saves us from our math problem. What does this, from what we've seen in the numbers for a business, let's start with the 35 and the 20. They seem to be the numbers that are going to be the solid numbers. The business taxes are going to go from 35 to 20 percent. The president says he's not negotiating. You believe that it's going to stay there. Give me real numbers. What does that look like for the average business in the state of Arizona, well, well, in your district? Yeah, it's more than that, though. And, and, and here's the classic problem. We're not doing tax cuts. We're doing tax cuts and tax reform. We're rewriting 68,000 pages of tax code. And we all get caught in this loop where we're saying, well, I think I'm going to be at the 25% marginal tax rate, but not understanding there's so much more that goes into that. So let's say you're that business. If I come to that business and say, OK, you're now at a 20% tax rate, but you get to expense, not depreciate, expense. So you go buy that new piece of equipment. The next day, you get to take that off your tax obligation. Will you go buy that new piece of equipment so you can hire more people and get more efficient and get more productive and we have some economic expansion? That expensing part, that sort of acceleration on steroids, is we're finding in the economic modeling more powerful than even lowering the rate, which we're lowering the rate. Um, and we're doing that 40% cut in the corporate tax rate is the same thing we're doing for what we call pass-throughs, um, LLCs, right. partnerships. Because for Arizona, that's how a lot of us, you know, when you were a contractor, LLC. you were probably an LLC. Um, my businesses, we were LLCs. Those were all pass-throughs where we have that, 
you make a dollar and there was that formula of how much you had to take as personal income tax right. and how much you could take as business. Um, that formula is pretty much going to stay the same, but the rates now you're going to pay it on are going to be lower and your opportunity to buy things and expense them is going to be there. So I want to, that is a big part of the discussion that is, and the other part is the repatriation of dollars from overseas and businesses mm -hmm. coming back. I have to take a quick break. When we get back, I want to talk about that part, the business part, the growth part, but then the individual, what it's going to mean to individual families. I know there's not a lot of threshold numbers yet, but what it means and what the models are showing. So Congressman Schweikert's on the Ways and Means Committee. He is one of the smartest people in D.C. when it comes to the numbers on any stretch, and he's a self-proclaimed numbers nerd. So when you want the numbers broken down in a way, you said it, I didn't. You want the numbers broken down in a way a simple guy like I can understand, here's a smart man that can do it. We'll break them down here in just a minute. We're here with Congressman Schweikert. We're talking about tax reform that's happening right now in part of the Ways and Means Committee, is rewriting these tax codes, 68,000 pages. We were talking about the business side of this. With the tax rate being lowered from 35 to 20, what does that do for money that's overseas? How much of that is actually going to come yeah. back now? Hey, look, you almost have to think of the tax code as having these major pillars. There's those of us as individual. There's the pass-throughs, like the businesses we had. There's corporate tax. But then there's this monolith out there, it's ter territorial. What happens when a big company has branches all over the world? Are part of their operations are different parts of the world? And today, we're functionally getting scammed because of how dysfunctional our tax code is, where you keep your expenses in the United States, but you book your profits overseas. And why wouldn't you? If I'm in Ireland and I have a 12.5% tax rate, and here it's 35, you keep your profits, you keep your intellectual property, you pay your royalties to your Irish subsidiary. We're trying, that's going to get changed because we need those resources, we need those jobs, we need the ownership of that technology to stay here in the United States. So it's a combination of things. We're doing something called deemed repatriation. You hear all the time about all this money right. is parked overseas. So. Uh, it'll be on two tiers rate and it has to do with what's in cash and what's been in, put into bricks and sticks and because uh, for a couple reasons and saying here's what we're going to do you have all that money on your balance sheet we're going to deem that you pay the taxes you pay the taxes at any time you know over the the next several years but now you're on a territorial tax system you can move money in and out and we start being able to compete with the rest of the world because right now we're getting our heads kicked in um, they call it base erosion. Okay. It, the number of the big companies that were based here in the United States 30 years ago that are gone, Right. we need them to come back. Absolutely. And when you look at the individual part of this now, so we get the businesses growing because you're cutting their tax rate and everything you're talking about with the pass-throughs. Now for the individuals, when you say to the, let's say somebody that makes more money, you're saying to wealthier Americans who are going to an accountant to do their taxes, your tax rate's going to go from 39.6 to 35, but they're also talking about closing a lot of these yeah. loopholes, so you're being taxed on more of the money that you've actually earned. So your adjusted gross income goes up, even though your tax rate goes down. Look, and, and this is one of the tough things for a lot of people to conceptually, because let's face it, when we're on the radio and this, when we have little bits of time, sure. we'll say, well, you're going to be at a 12% tax rate. Okay, but it's are you at that tax rate? But we've doubled the standard deduction. So we're hoping in a couple weeks to put up a little website where you can just put in your experience of your last year's taxes and sort of see where your numbers are. Turns out those on the upper tier of income are the primary users of, uh, 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 of certain deductions and lots of the big deductions. And we're trying to create a world where 90% of the population will do its taxes on just a big postcard. Right. And those with more complex returns, okay, fine. You're probably still using an accountant, but it's going to be a lot less expensive because it's going to be a lot simpler. And I think that's the, I think most people want to make sure they're paying their fair share in, to the government. Everybody feels like they, I'm one of them that feels everybody should pay something to be here. But it's so convoluted. I have somebody that does my taxes, and mine is still pretty straightforward. But the idea of making sure that if there's a deduction available, I want to take advantage of it. I don't want to cheat anybody. But, but here's a really, and, and this sort of is geek out time. How many things are in our current tax code? Because you understand there's hundreds and hundreds 
of different credits and deductions, some used a lot, some rarely used, some that are specifically put in there by lobbyists or special interests over the years that only benefit certain groups. Should you have a tax code that functionally chooses winners and losers? No. Instead of treating everyone fairly, so our, your resources go where you get the safest or the best rate of return, you make an economic decision instead of a decision that's based on gaming the tax code. All right, so the last question then. When, do, when will we see something, do you believe we will see something that the American people can look at and say, yes, we like that, or yes, we don't, a, a picture of what it looks like? And do you believe this tax reform bill, however it ends up looking, makes it through both houses of Congress yeah. and gets to the president's desk this year? Um, second question first. Um, Maybe I'm pathologically optimistic. Look, I'm 55 with a two-year-old. Um, yeah, they yeah, are. Best baby ever. <laughs> um, it, we're going to get it done this year because it's just so critical um, to our society. If we don't get economic growth, we are in just a world of hurt. I agree. And the second half of that, a big portion of it is out already. You can go to the House Ways and Means Committee. You can sort of see, saying, OK, here's what's going to happen. Here's the deductions that are going away, but I'm benefiting from lower rates. We're hoping in about two, three weeks, as we start to finish those last bits of numbers so we know where those rates kick in, you'll be able to just go on and just do it online. All right, and I, I got to tell you, honestly, in all seriousness, I appreciate your willingness to come on both the radio and the TV because you, you are able to take the very complex and simplify it. You really do for us, and I appreciate that, and I hope as this moves forward, you'll do it again with us on the radio side or the TV because people are very interested. They vote with their yeah. wallets. I Look, I've been absolutely stunned. I started this morning with actually a meeting with a handful of, um, we'll call them, they call themselves liberals, and it was we spent an hour just talking about how dynamic scoring works. And I think they started skeptically, and when they left, they understood. We use dynamic scoring all the time. We use it on spending. We use it on um, uh, environmental issues. We do, And that's going to help us understand what things we put in the tax code are good for growth and what things we put in the tax code that aren't good for growth, even though they may cost exactly the same. One of the guys that belongs in the House of Representatives because he actually gets some work done from the House, House Ways and Means Committee, Congressman Schweiker. Thank you. Thank you. So much. We'll be back.